<sighs> what you know? Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight. Hello? Is that a... Ah, oh, shit, it's a show. Right. Right. Right! Ah! What is this? Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a very unique episode of What Is This? The show where I show my best friend, Ed, the weird and wonderful from the internet. And you're in my den. I wasn't expecting that. You just caught me getting last minute Christmas presents. Um, but mostly for me, because <laughs> like I'm going to be spending Christmas with anyone this year, am I right? Am I right? Huh. But in all seriousness, since this year, Christmas is going to be a little weird. And since it's been, a little, it's, going to, it's been a long time since I actually got to meet my friend Ed to record an episode of What well, Is This, I want to do a festive episode and do something a little bit special. So, I gave Ed a playlist. Six videos that are, I consider to be festive, weird, wonderful, a little bizarre, and gave it to him with zero context. So, let's dive right into it, shall we? And so, we are now here with Ed. How are you doing, buddy? I'm all right. I, I'm not bad, mate. I'm not bad. You sent me some really strange things recently, but um, that's what we're here to talk about. <laughs> exactly. This consider this your Christmas treat. Yeah, and you definitely saved the best for Christmas, because <laughs> like I think it is when we do this together. It's kind of easier because normally you've at least hinted what we're going to watch, but this time I was totally going in blind. I mean, you did send me some little like hints as in like a little thing you might say before is in to, to introduce the clip. But other yes. than that, they, they kind of don't really reveal what the clip is. They kind of, it's just, it's like a little setup, like a little cheeky setup. Think of it like, th think of it like a, something you find in a Christmas cracker. It's only one line, it doesn't really make any sense, and then it's, it's almost like a fortune cookie. You gotta suss it out yourself. I know, and like, boy, did I suss it out when it kind of, it kind of gave a slap in the face, literally. <laughs> oh, oh my. What a start. This is horrible. Oh. Oh. The one I gave you first, this is the f this is actually the very first time we've actually done a trauma movie because this is Poultry Geist, The Night of the Chicken Dead, directed by the legend himself Lloyd Kaufman. Yeah. I've only I've only heard about this film. I've not watched it because the um, horror hangout guys have talked about this film before, and I've yeah. I've heard them mention it on their podcast. So like, mm -hmm. uh, it was just one of those things where I've heard about this film, but I, and I've heard about some gross elements in it, but I've never actually seen it. So it was my first time experiencing it, and it was just like, it's pretty. I mean, it's like. It's, it's funny gore, but it's so over the top that it, even though it's comedy gore, it's still shocking, you know? <laughs> oh my god, angelic sounds. Oh, so gory! <laughs> Look at the blood! It's immense! Sloppy Joes! <laughs> oh, don't slip, love. Yeah, I, I didn't expect to see so much, like, arse stuff. It's like there's a lot of arse stuff in those clips, which always grosses me out. I don't like sort of toilet humour and kind of like really gross stuff to do with toilets. And there's yeah. a lot of that in there. 
and there's a lot of like shots of things going in or out of arse. <laughs> it's such a disgusting. It's very trauma. It's yeah. incredibly trauma. I mean, one example we might do for the for the podcast is the uh, is the Toxic Avenger. The I mean, that's Toxic that's Avenger. the most like well known one, isn't it? Out of all of yeah. them, I think. Yeah. But mm. uh, interesting factor is being a Toxic Avenger. Do you know there was a cartoon series that spun out of that? I watched the uh, Toxic Crusaders. I definitely I watched yeah! that. And it, it was so funny how they could make a kids show out of. <laughs> <laughs> Toxic Avenger. <laughs> Cause it's, I actually had the uh, action figure of Toxie from Toxic Crusaders, the main character in Toxic Crusaders. Fucking <laughs> Im Imagine that underneath your Christmas tree, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we're going to move on to video number two. Now, video number two, I mean, I wanted to combine a couple of things. So, obviously, one of the biggest things about Christmas is going to Mass. Um, I, I was born Roman Catholic, and uh, back in the day, my grandmother and my grandfather used to go to Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve Mass, and we'd go together. But it's boring. It's all a bunch of humming and ooing and like, oh, how's the body of Christ? We wanted something fun. So, I gave you uh, a viral video that's just exploded over the last few weeks. Yeah. Exercise judgment right now. Because we In have... the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Standing in the office of the prophet of God, <laughs> I execute judgment on you, COVID-19. Oh. I execute judgment on you, Satan, you destroyer. You <laughs> this works so well. Some of the faces, like... So metal. And it just, it, it, it marries up so perfectly, doesn't it? Because he's got a very, like, ferocious kind of voice that kind of just mixes so well with metal. That it's, it's a perfect combination. You can understand why that kind of thing would really catch on on YouTube, can't you? It's just, it's just a perfect, like, they go together so well. It's amazing. It was literally headbang and get into it. I couldn't do anything else because I just loved it so much. <laughs> would you go to church more often if they had heavy metal? Right? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's like, I, 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 there's actually a band called Metal Church, isn't there? There is, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, I mean, sermons would be far more exciting. I actually, if you look at the comments in that video, there's actually, there's actually a couple of priests that say, look, legitimately, I kind of want you to play at my sermons. Again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Perfect. The third video I sent you is actually from a classic movie, and I thought, you know what, I'm try I want I want to give you something that's actually already very well known, and this is the opening sequence from the movie Brazil. Now, have you seen Brazil before? I haven't, no. Oh, the Christmas card comes. We haven't got the chimney. You'll see. He finds a way. <laughs> I don't know about that way, though. This is not what you want for Christmas. It was kind of funny, but out of context, it, I think I'd, I'd need to see the whole movie for it to really kind of punch out to me, because I, I think, it, from my reaction to that, I think I was kind of enjoying it, but it, I didn't really kind of react more than you know, I needed, like, I should have done. Go. But do you know what the funny thing is? Do you know what the funny thing is? That's the, literally the opening scene of the movie. So right. in other words, everyone will be just as confused as you were. Right, okay. But although, second, although it's weirdly enough to remember, to, to you almost forget that Brazil is actually a Christmas movie. Sam, what are we going to do with you? But I love how the, happily the wife just signs everything away. It's like, okay, well, I have to sign this and I have to sign that. Doesn't like contest it at all. It's like, okay, I'll, I'll just sign him away. <laughs> well, I find funny as well. So you see she's panicking at first. It's like, yeah, okay, what's happening? And the other one's like, oh, do it again. But can you do it a little harder, please? Just type it a little yeah. harder. <laughs> there he goes. Just there. Just press harder this time. Good. Oh, what is this is all about. That is your receipt for your husband. Thank you. And this is my receipt for your receipt. Uh, the whole movie is really, really, really quirky. And if you've ever seen a Terry Gilliam movie before, this uh, Brazil is his first proper feature length movie. Uh, that is all on his own, nothing Monty Python related. So, but Brazil is full blown his first kind of movie 
where it's all him. And oh my goodness, it's quirky as hell. I love Terry Gilliam. Yeah. My uh, my most my most experience with like sort of uh, Terry Gilliam Monty Python type stuff is I used to always watch the uh, Flying Circus, you know, the TV show with yeah. my dad. I watched that so much and as a kid, and so that's the the out of Monty Python stuff. That's what really sticks in my mind the most. The next video I gave you is what I when I gave you this description. Um, I gave you just a simple description: is this is pure drunk uncle energy. And I bet you at every Christmas dinner, obviously this year is different, but every other Christmas dinner, there's always one uncle that has a little too much to drink and just really, really wants to sing his heart out. And so I gave you the I'm the Flamingo song. Yo, oh my God, who's this guy? I'm walking all around, better drink some wah wah. I'm just Put some clothes on, mate. Coming on your shoreline. Here I go, I'm gonna peacefully drink, yo. I'm slowly creeping up to the front yard. Nothing threatening here, I'm just a flamingo. I'm a flamingo and I'm coming up to you. Oh, is that your child? I'm gonna rip out his motherfucking eyeballs. I'm gonna rip out his goddamn eyeballs. Jesus. I'm a flamingo, I'm gonna rip out your eyeballs. Yeah, that, that was really, really good. I've never even heard of that at all. Uh, and it just, it came on. And it, it, it's that's just another one where it, it's, all you can do is really dance to it. But you kind of, he's one of those people where he doesn't care that he's like kind of, his whole thing is, it's, it's this embarrassing kind of uncle type, like you said. But he doesn't, he doesn't care that, that that's the whole comedy of it isn't it it's like he's not embarrassed about being like that that's just i'm gonna go full on if i'm gonna if i'm gonna do that you know yeah he he oozes he oozes like the 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 sexual energy like i discovered i've discovered this man his name his name is mark uh Rebelet, right mark Rebelet, and he i discovered him during the pandemic and you know we've all been locking inside and then somewhere halfway through this just appears in my feed just stumbling looking at it and i'm thinking how can you not be, how can you be upset after looking at this half naked man in his underwear playing some really decent funk dance music about a flamingo? How? Maybe it's a lawless nation for the flamingo. There's nothing that I do, can do about it. Do I God. I'm flying all out. Oh, is that a seizure? Look at that. <laughs> Didn't expect so much music stuff. It's a pretty like good groove here. Get a festive groove on. I'm a flamingo bitch. I'm gonna come and get your way. Oh, that's not a very flattering angle. No angle is flattering though. Then for dinner, I think I'm gonna do croutons and maybe a light baby spinach. I think I might do baby spinach for dinner. Um but first your sister. And first your sister. He has made a full blown career out of it. In fact, the weird thing is, you know what we even though it looks like a really weird green screen and all that stuff in that video, he's doing that live in front of a drive thru Right. So he's doing it like one of those drive-in theaters where all the cars are honking and clapping away. And there he is, just, it is, it is just, it is boxer shorts, totally enjoying himself. It is like the, sort of the epitome of kind of like, uh, like a, a, a bedroom kind of musician because he, he kind of just looks like he's in his bathrobe with his pants on, just, just like jamming out, you know? <laughs> I wish I had his confidence. If I was that confident, Oh, oh my goodness, I could I could conquer the world if I was that confident. What's up, bitch? It's me. It's your flamingo. Thank you. <laughs> Blooming heck. Fifth video. Now, fifth video is interesting. It's a very, very short one. And I just wanted to put you in a full sense of security. Oh, this looks lovely. This is nice, refreshing change. I, I expect it's not, but... Santa. <laughs> no witnesses? Oh. <laughs> oh. Cruel. Yeah, the scary Santa Claus. 
But it's yeah. getting beautifully shot, that film. It's a little short, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. A little short it's film. A short by, it's a short by Turbo Punch. Mm. Uh, who, uh, who basically have uh, Tom, Thomas Tomscar Ridgewell. Don't worry, Chief. There's nothing I can't handle. I can't handle this. This is this is what this is now. I understand why Santa. Uh, That's why no no kids really get to see Santa uh, drop presents underneath the tree. Now I know why. No witnesses. Fantastic. And it comes out of nowhere, because I've seen in your reaction, you actually go and say like, oh, this is nice. This is really nice. Yeah, well, it's deliberately done like in that way, where it's shot like a, a proper classic Christmas yeah. film, isn't it? It's like the lighting is all sort of golden, and it's like everything looks so pretty, and then all of a sudden you get this nasty end to it, which is it's, it's great for a, a comedy short. That's what you need, you know? You want to lure them the, in. The thing for me that gets me is not the fact that, she, that he shoots the kid. It's right afterwards as he's lowering the gun down. He just takes a nibble of his cookie. And to me, that just shows like, you know what, I have priorities. I need to finish this cookie before I do, before I hide the body in a very surprising post-production, post-credit sequence. Lovely. <laughs> right, last one is an oldie. And I want to show you an oldie because last year I showed you one of my uh, favourite Christmas movies ever. And it's a terrible one, which is Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. Mm. Um, so, I kind of wanted to show you another one of that sort. Hello there. Oh, it's an old one. Do you like this devil? Huh? Well, now. This looks 50s. Work? What is the sense of it? Like this, Santa. You must light it. Let's have it. <laughs> Oh, here's a devil. The Santa versus the devil. Psyching himself up with a lovely dance. Lots of devils. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, I can see why you picked this one because it, it, it definitely follows on from Santa Claus Conquers the Martians in terms of tone, because it's it's the same yeah. sort of era and the Santa Claus is a very similar type of Santa Claus, although he seems to be a, be a better actor. <laughs> He's a better actor than the real Santa. But here's the thing though, this is the interesting thing, that movie's Mexican, so all that is just very bad dubbing. And you can tell some of it's dubbing because especially from the children, they don't sound like they're really children probably were just like adults doing children's voices but I love the uh, I love the devil I love how like sort of like like he's probably a little scamp isn't he you know like and he's, he's got I love all the dancing as well it's quite a very dancey devil a lot of like pirouetting and kind of like like scampering about and like you must not be defeated by that bearded old ghost Santa well, the devil very nice devil. Either. Very like, you know, good at dancing. Very sort of uh, <laughs> agile on his feet. He'll puff and puff until his burning breath turns the doorknob and keyhole red hot. So that the magic key won't work, and Santa will burn his Oh, it's like what Kevin does in Home Alone. That's where they got the idea from. Spending too much time on that doorknob, mate. You want to get some other traps set up. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pitch looks out the window to watch Santa burn his hands. Doesn't seem to know he's right behind him. Could have kicked him right up the arse there, mate. <laughs> oh ho, a cannon. Now it's Santa's turn to get even with Pitch. I'll teach you. Like, what is it with the doll 
and the, the talking doll thing. Oh, yeah, I, I think, uh, from what I remember correctly, my reactions to the doll were quite, I was quite horrified by it. I was quite frightened. You were. It's like, you what? were. You sat there going, what is happening? I thought this was pleasant. <laughs> Yeah, because it was like, it was a nice way to end. I was thinking, oh, this is the last one. This is quite nice now. This is quite a nice bit. And then the doll came and was like, ah! <laughs> what? Look, am I going to leave you with, like, a, the super happiest note? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you question things. Look at that dry ice. It's, it's top of the pops. Oh, what the hell? God, every time it cuts that, it's terrifying. <laughs> Look at it, it's worse than Chucky. So, that was my six uh, Christmas crackers of wonder, as I gave to you. So, um, out of all those six, which one was your favourite? I think even though it disgusted me, I think I would have to go with Poltergeist. <laughs> Because I think it, it, well, it had the most like uh, impact out of what it, it was a good way to start because it's like whoa you hit you hitting me like hard here right away and yeah I think I got the best kind of reactions from seeing those clips out of yeah. all of them it's just yeah it's uh, it, I bet you I bet some of those will transform them into gifts for future yeah. you're suddenly going to see your face go it'll be. Damn right, what brilliant. about you? What would you pick as your favourite out of those? Out of those six, right. The one for me is Secret Santa for me because it's so well done yeah. and it suddenly just makes a dark turn and it's my kind of sense of humour anyway. It's just like, you know, everyone likes all pleasant and sweet but suddenly I just want a twist in the, I want a tiny sting in the tail and oh boy, was I not expecting him to take out a real silent night, deadly night. If I'm saving catch my chest. <laughs> You've made it through Halloween. Now try and survive Christmas. Silent night. Deadly night. Although all the ones I have, most of the ones I've shown you were things that we've, I've discovered during things like the pandemic mm. and uh, during lockdown and just finding interesting things about, 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 about it, it's weird how during lockdown in particular, you're actually able to really find the weird out there because people are also trapped indoors and not sure what to do. And this year's a lot, for a lot of people's Christmases, it is going to be that. So you are going to realize sometimes if you are not going to be surrounded by family and friends and presents, just go online and find some weird shit. Everyone's doing it this Christmas and like we have and so can you. And that was the end of the discussion. I gave Ed six very unique presents this year, and I don't think he's gonna forget them anytime soon. What do you guys think? What did you think of those six weird little videos? If you like what you saw and wanna see more of those videos I saw, the links are gonna be in the description down below. Do not hesitate to have a look. And leave some comments. Which ones are your favorite? Which ones do you like? Are there any other Christmas oddities? Do not hesitate, drop them back below. And so with that, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and screw 2020, yeah? See you guys later. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you like what you see and want to see more trash like this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and hit the notification bell. We also got the Trash Tapes audio podcast, which is available on Spotify, iTunes and all other platforms. So. Until next time, keep an eye on your trash. There might be some treasure in there. See you guys later.